Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome actor and United Nations Development Program Advocate, Alec Baldwin. choking because I'm never going to be eating shrimp again, apparently, for the rest of my life, so. Um, truth hurts, right? Um, hello and welcome to everyone. It is a pleasure for me to be here participating in my first Social Good Summit. I heard that this is a group of some of the most dedicated and connected thinkers and communicators here, so it's an honor for me to join you. Some of you may be surprised to learn that I am here to talk about indigenous peoples, forest protection, and climate change, but I would like you to try to get comfortable with that idea because you'll be hearing a lot more from me on this issue over the next few months. Like many of you, I am extremely concerned about climate change. I have advocated uh, for steps to be taken regarding climate change for many years. But the last two years have been a true education for me on where climate change solutions and leadership are coming from. The UN Development Program invited me to participate in the Paris Climate Conference last December. I helped present the Equator Prize, which many of you know honors local action to address global challenges like climate change, poverty, and environmental degradation. In Paris, I heard firsthand from many indigenous and forest people groups what climate action looks like on the ground. It opened my eyes to issues that I would like to see get more attention from the public and, of course, our political leaders. Here is one of them. Tropical forests are essential to fighting climate change. There can be no successful climate agreement and no future for our planet without greater protection of the world's forests. Deforestation accounts for 15% of total global greenhouse gas emissions. And when we clear forests, we're not only releasing more carbon dioxide into the atmosphere, we are effectively tossing a hand grenade into the only safe, natural, and proven technology that we have for carbon capture and storage. Everyone in this room understands this, but that message needs to get out more widely. We are losing our world's forests at an, at an alarming rate, as you all know. And I really feel like people should not only know more about that, but they should be more up in arms about that. If we keep chopping down tropical forests at the rate we're doing now, we're lost. But here is another thing I've learned that needs more attention. We have to invest in and empower the people that are protecting forests, like my guest Patricia, who's coming out here momentarily, <clears throat> who, you, who you will meet in a moment. Indigenous peoples and local communities across the world are an indispensable part of the climate fight. They have official legal rights to over 500 million hectares of forests, which is about one-eighth of the world's total forest area. If this carbon were released into the atmosphere as CO2, it would equal about 30 times the annual CO2 emissions produced by all passenger vehicles worldwide. And indigenous people don't want their forests to be destroyed. But here is the problem. <clears throat> A recent study shows that indigenous people in local communities still lack legal rights to almost three quarters of their traditional lands. This gap in land rights is bad for forests, it is bad for the climate, and it is bad for people. It leaves vulnerable the many heroes that are working tirelessly to protect and defend the world's forests from illegal logging and from extractive industries. I know that many of the panels at this Social Good Summit will be touching on various aspects of these sustainable development goals and how fantastic it is that we have this new ambitious framework in place to guide global thinking and action and investment over the coming years. But this gap in land rights mentioned will be as damaging to the prospects of achieving the SDGs as it will be in meeting the Paris climate targets. So the message I am here to deliver is this. <clears throat> if government and businesses are serious about fighting climate change, 
serious about making progress toward the SDGs, then get serious about empowering the people who are protecting the world's forests. Do not ignore this issue. The absence of local land rights will continue to undermine our efforts to curb poverty, hunger, and climate change. On that note, I want to turn now to a discussion with a prominent indigenous people's leader from Ecuador about this very issue. Joining me for this conversation is Patricia Walinga, a truly inspirational leader. Patricia, Patricia is the international representative for Kichwa Sarayaku from the Ecuadorian Amazon. She has dedicated her life to successfully keeping oil development off of the Sarayaku territory for the past 25 years and is actively promoting community forest management for the Kichwa people free from oil, mineral, and lumber extraction. And translating for her is the executive director of Amazon Watch, Le Leila Salazar Lopez. Please welcome Patricia Walinga and Leila. <laughs> Backstage, I did mention that I would like to see Patricia run for President of the United States. <laughs> but she cannot, of course, yeah. do that. Okay. We have to change those laws like they thought about doing for Schwarzenegger once upon a time, if you remember that. <laughs> to make Schwarzenegger the President of the United States. Um, <laughs> now, can you tell us about where you're from and the, th and the threats facing your people and your forests. Describe to them the situation down there in Ecuador. Soy de un pueblo de 1,200 habitantes que se llama Sarayacu y está en el centro sur de la Amazonía ecuatoriana en América del Sur. I am from Sarayacu, from the middle of the Amazon rainforest, the south central area of the Amazon rainforest in Ecuador. We have a community of 1,200 people. So, somos un pueblo que luchamos. No permitimos que ingrese la empresa petrolera. No permitimos que ingresen carreteras a dañar nuestra selva. Y estamos luchando hasta ahora para que las industrias extractivas no destruyan nuestro espacio territorial. Esa es nuestra principal amenaza. And we are defending our rainforests from all different kinds of threats like oil companies, oil exploration, roads. We are struggling against industrial development in our rainforest territories. Now you had mentioned, by the way, we're gonna come back to this, but you had mentioned to me backstage that, because I'm not wholly knowledgeable, knowledgeable about this, about what's going on in the economy in Ecuador, but you said that in the northern third is where all the Chevron, Texaco extraction miasma has been taking place. Beneath that in the south is the nat National Park, which is called what again? The Yasuni. Yasuni National, National Park. Park. And then below that are the territories that, are, that she lives in, the, uh, um, of the indigenous people, where the uh, Ecuador, of course, holds, the, 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 they've ceded the authority to the, to the land, to the indigenous people, except for the mineral rights below the ground where they live. Now, describe for me uh, what the indigenous people, what role does she play and her people? And talk about what we, what we talked about backstage, about the success they've had. What role do they play in managing the land there in Ecuador? Hemos logrado mantener los bosques primarios. Tenemos el, más del 80% de nuestro territorio con bosque primario. Hemos logrado combatir el cambio climático de manera frontal. Hemos logrado también que el Estado de Ecuador sea sentenciado por violentar nuestros derechos. Con 10 años de proceso jurídico, hemos logrado que por lo menos en nuestro territorio tengamos un poquito de respeto. See, there are a lot of people that speak Spanish here. Did you pack this place with your friends? Is that what you've done? Yeah, there are many people that speak Spanish here. They are protecting, we are protecting primary rainforests. In Sarayaku, 80% of our territory is primary rainforest. And that is our contribution 
to the world. That is our contribution in combating climate change. We are protecting primary rainforest. And when the government has disrespected us, we have taken our government to court. We were actually in a case, had a human rights case against our government for 10 years. Which court? In, um, ¿cuál corte era? in the Corte Interamericana de Derechos Humanos. In the Inter-American Court of Human Rights, and we won. <laughs> She also said that I didn't translate was, at least with this case, we gained back a little bit of the respect that they had taken away from us because they hadn't consulted them when they came onto their land. Do they try to have reporters attacked by dogs in your country like they do here in uh, Dice que, que North mandan Dakota? Los perro, mandan los yeah. para los, los tributos indígenas Is there a acá? warrant out for Amy Goodman's arrest in Ecuador, I wonder? I don't know. Hey. Only here in the United States. Oh, I get it. Okay. Um, <laughs> the, um, uh, now, tell me, if you would, about your living forest proposal. What is it? And how can people here and across the world support your work? ¿Cuál es la propuesta de Selva Viviente? ¿Cómo la gente puede apoyar? La propuesta de Selva Viviente es una propuesta integral que propone dejar para siempre a perpetuidad excluidos de la explotación de las industrias extractivas, que dejen los territorios como espacios de vida para el mundo entero. Y por eso nosotros necesitamos que estas propuestas sean escuchadas, sean apoyadas y haya una solidaridad global, que los pueblos que vivimos ahí tengamos la oportunidad de demostrar unos espacios vivos que puedan contribuir al planeta, no solamente con los pobrecitos indígenas, sino con la vida para que este planeta pueda seguir subsistiendo. So our Living Forest proposal is an integral pro proposal about protecting life. It is about permanently protecting our rainforests that are interconnected with all life keeping them free from extraction. These are places, these are spaces that are sacred, they're alive, and we want to keep them protected forever. This is the contribution that we have in protecting the world's rainforest, in protecting our climate. We want to be heard, and we want our proposals to be implemented. We want the opportunity to amplify our voices and to show that this is our contribution. We're not just poor indigenous people that are, you know, that have these complaints. We're contributing valuable, valuable um, contributions to the world by protecting our rainforests. Why do you think indigenous peoples are better stewards of forests than governments? What have indigenous groups figured out that the rest of us have not? que los gobiernos, ¿qué saben ustedes que los, los demás no sabemos? Nosotros sabemos vivir con la naturaleza, no destruirla. Sabemos comprenderla, sabemos conectarnos. No estamos viendo a la naturaleza solamente como recurso económico. Estamos viendo a la madre tierra como parte de nuestra vida y la sobrevivencia del planeta. So we know how, we know how to live with nature. We are one with nature. We don't, we are one with Mother Earth. We respect Mother Earth. We are not only looking at nature as a resource to exploit, but that we are connected with all of nature. Unlike here in the US where uh, those that were the most connected with nature, I'd say in US history, save for some of the people in this room, obviously. We corral them on a reservation, let them sell inexpensive cigarettes and have casino gambling there. But the, um, <clears throat> I want to ask you, what do you think, what, our last question, because we're running out of time, is what do you think is something that we Americans have to learn from what's going on in Ecuador? What do we have to learn from here? What message do you give to us of what we might do here? Es el momento de ustedes. Nosotros ya lo hemos dado todo. Hemos abierto lo más sagrado de nosotros. Ahora les toca a ustedes contribuir. Les toca a ustedes abrir su corazón y tratar de entender y apoyar las resistencias de los pueblos indígenas, como las de Sarayacu, como las de North Dakota, como aquellos pueblos que estamos luchando. Es compromiso de todos ustedes. No es solamente mi problema, también es problema de ustedes. What is that? <coughs>
<clears throat> now is your time. It is your time. We've taken the time to open up to you all, share our proposals, share our ideas, and now it's your time to act. We need you to open your heart and act and support indigenous resistance to this oil exploration and oil extraction on our lands in Sarayaku, in North Dakota with the Sioux people. This is not just our problem. This is your problem too. So we need your support. We are literally from this clock, I've got to see here, we're out of time, but I wanted to say, and, and I, I know this is kind of a cheap uh, uh, reach for applause maybe, but, but I wanted to say, this woman is a hero. This woman is a true hero. She's dedicated her life to fighting the oil companies and the other extractive industries down there. She succeeded. She's kept them out of their territory. What happened with Chevron in Texaco was right on the border of the National Park there. We talked earlier, was there some cross-contamination there? The park is considered, you said, the most biodiverse area in all of the, uh, the, in the world. world. In the, in the world. <laughs> this Ecuadorian, this ribbon of this Ecuadorian rainforest, and what's preventing this from going on and on, what's happening in Peru and what's happening in a lot of areas down there in terms of extraction and the uh, pollution that results from that and the displacement of indigenous peoples that, that, that uh, uh, results from that. It, it's, it, it's not happening in her area because of her and the work of the people that she works with down there in Ecuador. So I'd like to have a round of applause. Can I just make a plug and say go to their website? Hmm, what is the website? No, you tell me. Yes. <laughs> tell them about tell them about the website. If you want to find out more about Sarayaku and the Living Forest proposal, go to sarayaku.org or go to amazonwatch.org to take action. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Please welcome.